So good morning, uh, this is uh, Felice Darko, and uh, this is the rapid fire session that uh, I prepared for the um, American Society of Pediatric Neuroradiology uh, annual meeting in Miami 2022. So I just recorded that for my YouTube channel in order to uh, kind of give you the opportunity to challenge your knowledge about uh, um, uh, advanced temporal bone images. So we can start and there will be some questions and I will, uh, some polls, and I will let you, uh, leave you uh, 20 seconds in order to um, try to give the right answer. So um, let's start the presentation mode. So let's start. First of all, this is my disclosures and uh, uh, so this is a nice movie. I like it very much. It's called What We Do Into the Shadow is Full of Vampires. Uh, but I like this, uh, the title, right? Um, because what exactly um, something that we do every day, we work into the shadow. And what we do, in particular, is the T-Bone time with, with uh, Kelly Gould and, and Amy that are uh, together with me in the T-Bone session of the American Society of Pediatric Neuroradiology. What we like to do in the shadow is to look at the temporal bone, look at the associated findings and do nice diagnosis. So let's see if you guys can do as well. Uh, and let's start with the case one. This is a six year old female with rickets caused by distal tubular acidosis, so kidney problem and bilateral sensory nearing hearing loss since he was one. This is the, um, one of the main images. I will go to the other, but remember that the association between abnormalities in the temporal bone and other clinical or radiological association in other organ system is critical to do the diagnosis. So uh, I will leave five seconds to look at the six image. So different slides at the level of the temporal bone. This is an high resolution T2. Remember, you always need a 3D T2 high resolution uh, sequence and look at the shape and appearances of the cochlea and if there is anything else abnormal going on. And this is the equivalent in the CT. So you have, again, look at the cochlea. Uh, does it look normal or there is something missing? What else is going on in the temporal bone? Of course, you need to have a bit of uh, knowledge of the anatomy, uh, but uh, that's very, very um, uh, typical findings uh, and also uh, look, remember to look every time at the symmetry or asymmetry of the findings because they, this can give you clues. So I would say that question, what is the most likely genetic abnormality in the clinical context of tubular acidosis and rickets is uh, Pendred syndromes due to uh, SLC26A4, very long and difficult gene, but very famous, or uh, is another gene FOXY1 uh, also related to so-called Pender syndrome, or this is not genetic, but it's a prenatal insult because the abnormality is asymmetrical, or is a charge syndrome, which as you know, uh, is due to this gene CHT7. I will leave you uh, 15 to 20 seconds to uh, work out. So remember the MRI and CT pattern and try to figure out what was going on. Okay, now maybe you had the time to, to answer. And this is actually a Pendren syndrome, but due to a specific gene that is FOXY1, because Pendren syndrome can be associated with goitier, so uh, basically problem is in the thyroid, but when it's associated with tubular acidosis, the gene is not the famous as uh, SLC26A4, but FOXY1. So it's the same phenotype, is associated with tubular acidosis, Think FOXY1. And remember that the appendix syndrome is characterized by enlarged vestibular aqueduct with often, not always, associated incomplete partition type 2. Sometimes you also have the dilatation of the vesicle that we call Mondini triad. Okay. This is the paper that the group at Great Ormond Street, my hospital, wrote uh, about FOXY1. And uh, um, if you want as a reference, so I will give you some reference. The case two is actually three cases, very similar, three unrelated neonates with heart defect and failed the new ball screening. And uh, I will show you just one screenshot. Look at the cochlea here. And uh, that's enough to do the diagnosis. Very difficult to give you a lot of information without scrolling just in the slide, but also added, added um, quite anterior corona of T2 of the patient tree. So look at this uh, appearance of the ears in these three patients. 
And this is really, really, there is something missing here uh, in um, uh, something wrong in this three patient. So think, is this a charge? Is this a SOX10 mutation? So Wardenburg syndrome, or these are three cases of cochlear hypoplasia type three. So if you know, if you're familiar with the classification of cochlear hypoplasia, there are four types of classification. This is the three, but due to a prenatal insult, or this is a bore branchiotorenal syndrome due to an AIA1 mutation. Remember, these are advanced temporal bone cases, but I just want to show you these images once again. So it's a bore, it's a charge, it's a prenatal insult characterized by cochlear hypoplasia, or is a SOX10. So now you have uh, um, again, uh, 10 to 15 seconds to answer. So think about that, what was missing there? Uh, what was the uh, common characteristic what, in which uh, aspect the three cochlear were, uh, the three temporal bone appearances were uh, not similar and in which aspect they were similar. Okay, so this was a charge. Why? Because if we come back, to the, uh, to the um, uh, imaging, all these patients have a different kind of cochlear hypoplasia, here quite uh, bad, here uh, a bit more formed, you can see the modulus, here very, very bad, it's almost a cochlear bite, but all of them have, instead of the vestibular, uh, vestibular and semicircular canal um, uh, areas, they have just a small cyst without semicircular canal, on top of that, patient three also showed absence of olfactory bulbs that is a clue for the diagnosis. So remember that charge has typical absence of semicircular canal, most of the cases, not all of them, but most of them. Variable cochlear morphology, mainly hypoplastic, characteristic external ear, so-called charge ear, and olfactory bulb hypoplasia that was often um, um, you know, overlooked in the past, but it seems to be very, very important. And of course, remember charge is for coloboma, heart defect, attrition of the nasal coronary retardation of the growth, genital and urinary abnormalities and ear abnormalities. Okay, so when you don't see uh, semicircular canal, uh, canals at all, look at the ear of the child, uh, externally, the external ear of the child, the pinna, and think about charge. And these are two interesting paper, just putting together all the characteristics. And you can see this small cyst instead of the vestibule without semicircular canal, typical of charge. Uh, case three, this is a child with Hirschsprung disease, so this abnormal dilatation of the um, um, intestine, and again, failed newborn screening. Look at this uh, uh, cochlea, and look at this cochlea in CT and in MRI, look at the characteristics of semicircular canal. Some of them are visualized here. Um, they are probably not completely normal, but it is very, very important that you focus in this case on the characteristic of the cochlea and of the semicircular canal. So this looks different from the cases I showed you before. So look at this and look at this again, something wrong with the olfactory bulbs and look at this dilatation of the, um, the intestine typical of Hirschsprung. So we have Hirschsprung disease. We have Kalman disease because also this child, I can tell you now that has either absent or markedly hypoplastic olfactory bulbs. And we have these appearances of the cochlea. Yeah. The cochlea looks a bit squashed, squashed like hammered cochlea. And uh, there are some of the semicircular canal absent. So these are the findings. What do you think about this combination of cochlea, um, uh, hammered cochlea, uh, abnormal semicircular canal, but not absent, Ishfrun and Kalman? So is this another form of charge? So there's this. Uh, a uh, small percentage of charge without the typical absence of semicircular canal. Is this a Wanderburg syndrome due to SOX10? Is this a walker warburn syndrome? Um, or so, so associated, as you know, um, with terrible malformed brain? Or this is another gene for branchiotorenal syndrome called 61. I will give you now another 15 seconds to think about that. So in this case, remember, again, we have cochlear, hypoplasia, abnormal semicircular canal, Kalman, and Hirschsprung. This combination of findings is a clue for the diagnosis. Please don't Google it. And um, yes, this is the answer. This is a SOX10 mutation, and this is my teaching point. Wardermuth syndrome can be due to several genes, but when it's SOX10, 
is typical combination of Hirschsprung, Kalman. They have pigmentation changes in a typical Amherst cochlea. So the cochlea has all the gyre, but they are a bit squashed. And some of the abnormality in the, um, uh, the semicircular canal that are not absent, but the uh, all absent, but the posterior semicircular canal are typically absent and this plastic ladder semicircular canal, there is a variability. Uh, remember though, that you can look at other parts, in particular, in, in, if you have a doubt for SOX, then look at the parotid and lady, lacrimal gland absence, like in these cases, or hypoplasia. And these are two papers that you can look. Uh, a case four is three-year boy with hypothalamic amartoma for laser ablation. You can see the hypothalamic amartoma. However, this is the in area. We have only few sequences there. Uh, the cochlea is uh, small and we call the clinician, the patient has right hearing loss. This is the appearance of the hand. Something is wrong with it, isn't it? And uh, this ear looks normal. This looks frankly abnormal, but these are not images uh, tailored for the temporal bone, both CT and MRI, but just images for the for the brain. So what we do, we have six fingers here, uh, patients with right hearing loss and a big hypothalamic hematoma. So my question for you is, what's going on here? Is a palisarol that we know they have hypothalamic hematoma due to GLE3 gene. Is a POU3F4 gene, so X-linked deafness. Also, they have abnormality in the hypothalamus or this is a branchiotorenal syndrome that can be due to AIA1 or 6 one these two genes that we saw before. So, sorry, I, I show you the, the, the answer already, but yes, this is actually a glitri gene, so polysterol. Remember, polysterol uh, uh, is characterized by polydactyly and hypothalamic amartomas that uh, um, behave clinically in a different way in comparison to the sporadic hypothalamic hematoma, but they also are associated with abnormality or can be associated with abnormality in the area like this paper from uh, Dr. Abula uh, shows. So you see the cochlear hypoplasia that in our case was unilateral, in this case is bilateral. So remember this association, but also remember the association with this typical appearance of the cochlear with large internal auditory canal, presence of in, intascar septum, but nothing in, inside the cochlea, cochlea empty, and this, this morphic hypothalamus, this is called incomplete partition type three. And this is typical of X-linked deafness. In these cases on axial, the hypothalamus sometimes look like this double S sign. And we published this uh, back in 2019 with, dot, uh, with Dr. Uh, Siddiqui. Uh, so remember uh, the, this, another association between the hypothalamus and inner ear malformation, but in this case is incomplete partition type 3. Finally, this is three year old girl with this plastic oracle. So again, a strange ear like in charge, lump on the neck and mixed hearing loss. So that's the cochlea. Look at the, this cochlea. There is the modulus here. There is the interscar septum, lamina spiralis. Is something wrong in the apex? Uh, there's like an extra um, spike on the on the on the apex, and this is how it looks on 3D. So there is a bit of abnormality in the apex, and this is the the oracle how it looks like. This is the cause of the bump in the neck, and the kidney is smaller for age. So you have this association again: ear, neck, kidney, and um, uh, cochlear abnormality. So again, what is this? It's a palisarol. It's an ixial deafness. It's a brachiotorenal syndrome due to AIA1 mutation, or it's brachiotorenal syndrome due to 6 one mutation. I will give you the last uh, uh, 15 seconds. So think about the association. We have neck, external ear, cochlear abnormalities, um, and kidney problems. So you, you kind of have already narrowed the differential because of the name. And OK, th that's OK. We can stop it here. And of course, we have problem in the branchial cleft, auto, so ear, and renal. So this has to be a branchial autorenal syndrome, but we cannot stop there. We can go further, and you can see that we can have the diagnosis as 6 one gene, because normally, the, we, we figure out the reviewing all the cases from our institution, Boston Children, uh, Boston, um, 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 uh, 
the, the hospital where Amy works, Mass and Hay, uh, Eye and Ear um, Hospital, and New York, that most of the bore have unwound coca that has been reported by the group in Texas uh, and by Kelly Robson before with this anterior offset. But this unwound coca is typical of AIA1. If you have this, this abnormal upper um, uh, turn that we call thorny cochlea, this is typical of 6 1 mutation in BOR. So basically, why is that? Because 6 1 expression in the OD vesicle is dependent on AIA. So if AIA is gone, we will have also six not working, but the other way around is not uh, true. And the expression of 6-1 is, is polarized to the apex of the cochlea. So we have, again, a genetic um, cause for this um, explanation for this phenotype. So it's very, very important, the difference with this typical unwound cochlea that is, again, due to AIA-1. So we discover this uh, genotype phenotype uh, differentiation in patients with brachiotorenal syndrome. And this is um, uh, my hope that uh, next year we can do a, a T-bone time live from Amalfi Coast with uh, Emigo, uh, Kelly, and maybe other friends. So I want to organize this. I'm from there. And uh, I hope, I really, really hope you enjoy this uh, um, uh, session. And um, uh, thank you very much.